for so many reasons. These past weeks of social distancing and staying at home have been difficult. But I don't need to tell you that. It does not become normal to preach here to an empty sanctuary. The longing to be together is significant. And it's not yet safe. The day of reconvening in person will come someday. And until that day, we will ensure you that there are ways to stay connected and perhaps even deepen connections because community matters. Practically, this means that we will continue online services and or hybrid services for the indefinite future. I know many of you do not anticipate feeling safe enough to leave your home or gathering in a group for many months. Even if we return to some kind of in-person gathering, we will continue to ensure online access to those who cannot gather in person. This is the least we can do to stay together. Being together matters. But what kind of togetherness are we missing now? We may certainly miss friends and family members with whom we are not sheltering in place. I've heard the sadness of many of you who long to hold your grandkids, as well as the kids and youth longing to be with anyone besides their parents and siblings. Perhaps you might be missing the proverbial watercolor cooler at work, the sociability with work colleagues that is harder to reproduce online. And if you are an essential worker still reporting to a job site, I suspect the sociable banter is significantly different at this time. By necessity, this crisis has reduced our connections, the numbers of people with whom we come into contact, the duration of in-person contacts outside our designated shelter mates, and how often how we connect with those beyond our home. If we do leave our houses, the face coverings we now wear reduce our appreciation of facial expression and social cues. Rather, their presence reminds us to keep our distance and to hurry safely home. Arg, it's enough to make one want to scream. Even as we may question the wisdom of those who rush back to newly reopened restaurants, stores, parks, or other places, perhaps we also get it. We likely feel the longing to be together with others. In his seminal work, The Great Good Place, sociologist Ray Oldenburg helps to explain the power of this longing to make connections with others. More specifically, he argues we need connections in third places, places that are no, neither home, the first place, or work, the second place. Third places are sites like street cafes in Paris, beer halls in Germany, pubs in Ireland. Third places can also be local bookstores, cafes, convenience store parking lots. Although the place may differ, they all serve a longing for human communion. According to Oldenburg's description, third places share a number of characteristics. Firstly, they are neutral ground where people can come and go. As such, they can also serve as social levelers where a variety of people from different backgrounds, social classes, etc., can gather together. In fact, one of the roles of joys of third places is that many of our roles that define us in other places are simply suspended. While third places have regulars that shape the character of a place, they are also accessible to new folks. Part of their accessibility is simply being open. Oldenburg explains, third places must stand ready to serve people's needs for sociability and relaxation before, between, and after their mandatory appearances elsewhere. Third places are sociable places with a tug towards a mood of play and laughter. As sociable places with a wide tolerance for letting, inviting people in, 
there are place, they are also places where we can learn to interact with a wide range of people, not just in terms of social location, but also in terms of personality. Yes, that person may be a bore, and that person over there might be off just a bit, but they too are part of the communion of a place. I miss my third places. Do you have a third place? What third places do you miss? I want to try something new and poll you. If you are on Zoom, a polling, go ahead, okay. A polling question should have popped up on your screen. As you are able, please respond to the poll. If you're on a phone or for some reason can't see the poll, the questions are, one, do you have a third place? Yes, no, I'm not sure. And question two, if you have a third place, what kind of place is it? A coffee shop, restaurant, library, bookstore, other store, other place? I think, Alex, if you wanna share results. Oh, come on, you're not voting. Somebody vote. <laughs> <laughs> I hear from our one resident tech person in person here, we have soccer field as a third place vote. Well, we tried. We're, we're, we're testing the polling for our annual meeting next week. We will make this work. Stephanie, it did work. Continuing. Stephanie, we had uh, 50, uh, 88. Okay. I'm gonna keep talking. Oldenburg thinks that if you have a third place, you're lucky. He bemoans the many city planners who segregate places of work and home without leaving spaces for third places, for soccer fields. In 1996, in the preface to the second edition of his book, Oldenburg mournfully cites the absence of third places for people to gather in a crisis. When available, these gathering places can help stage a community's responses to hurricanes, like event, events like hurricanes. Their absence is such a loss to Oldenburg because third places serve to sort people according to their potential usefulness in collective undertakings. Born in open diversity, Third places could be a site for gathering, sharing resources, and staging responses. Of course, we've been living through a crisis very different than a hurricane or a nor'easter. And given the nature of this crisis, we are basically barred from gathering in any kind of green and neutral spaces where some faces may be familiar regulars and others may be strangers. The loss of comfortable, playful banter over a cup of coffee with a friend in a coffee shop. I think of our congregant, David Lang, who was such a regular at the Starbucks in Cochituate that they prominently posted the notice of his death and a statement of their loss. These third places can become places that root us and link us to others and real and powerful ways. At our best, I believe First Parish can be a third place. We're gonna pause for a moment because I understand we've just, I've gone sideways. Thank you for your patience. Speaking of the fullness of places, we're full of humanity and tech glitches. <laughs> Third places can become places that root us and link us to others in real and powerful ways. At our best, I believe First Parish can be a third place. One of my favorite moments this year came in late January before a Sunday service. I was in a corner of the vestry setting something up from where I listened to the rising hum. Folks warmly greeting one another again and again. A simple sense of being there together, radiated in the room. I miss this more than I can say. I miss being there with all of you. 
So much has changed in recent weeks and more will change in the coming weeks. Slowly, the reality of the depth and duration of the impact of COVID-19 sinks in. We may think we know this, but then suddenly find ourselves feeling it in a way that knocks us off our feet. This is not a matter of a month or two. We are in this for a long haul of rolling changes and persistent uncertainty. Within such a forecast, it no longer makes sense to simply hold our breath until we can surface again in a normal world. Rather, we must start to ask, how can we live sustainably and meaningfully in this context? Like any third place, we are most definitely a mix of people, of different re interests, resources, capacities, and needs. Already we have seen how some step forward to help with tech and others ask for help to get onto Zoom. Some have been grateful to request and receive a mask while others have been busy on their sewing machines. Still others picked up the phone or started typing emails to check on others through the new neighborhood system. Others needed to receive that call. Together, we reach out to offer what we are able and to receive what we need. So my question is, what next? What needs remain unmet that we might be able to support within the resources of our congregation? What do you need? What might you be able to offer? For me, I've been wondering about our lawns. If the next step, safe step for gathering will be outdoors while maintaining social distance, how might we create safe opportunities to be together? And if we create such opportunities, how can we also include those who cannot join us in person? Or what if we thought of beyond, about beyond First Parish to our town? Are there ways we might be able to offer our lawns or parking lots to others in need of spaces to safely gather? Such musings are practical questions, yes, but they also get to the core mission of who we are. Oldenburg writes, in true communities, there are collective accomplishments. People work together and cooperate with one another to do things which individuals cannot do alone. What do we wish to accomplish together? There will be many lessons from this experience of weathering these months of the coronavirus. My hope is that one of these lessons will be that being together matters, that community matters. We not only need connections with other people, we also need places in which to mix and meet others, especially those that teach us to appreciate and to learn to live with a range of personalities, backgrounds, skills, and passions. Right now, such places are largely virtual, but at some point, we will be together again. And so I ask again, what next? What, how might we as a community work together to do what we could not do alone? Please share your thoughts for what needs we might address, as well as any resources, skills, and capacities for helping. Again, I want to underscore that we are all different in what we can do and in what we need. That's more than okay. The magic of third places is watching what might emerge from such a mix. I'll close where I began. These past weeks of social distancing and staying at home have been difficult. Looking ahead, we face more difficult weeks and months. But we are not alone. We are together. And as a community, we can do together what individuals cannot do alone. Let us draw strength from this. So may it be. Amen. 
sustained by our connections to each other and to all that is holy. Let us go beyond these walls. Let us be beyond these walls, bringing more light and life, love and justice to our shared world together. Amen. 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 Can I get an amen? Uh, uh, wonderful. Thank you.